Netflix book club. Netflix book club. Yeah, I'm not doing this. Welcome to Netflix book club. My name's Casey Aurora. What's up, guys? I'm Dennis Rooney. I'm Steve McDonald. This week we watched The French Connection, uh, d- directed by William Friedkin, uh, starring Gene Hackman. The movie, it's a gritty crime, uh, I would say, drama movie. Sure, a yeah. thriller. Yeah, it's a, it's a thriller. It's a See, I, I don't know. I would almost go so far as to say that this is a chase movie. Yeah, chase. Okay, yeah, I would say a chase as well. I know that that's okay. not really a genre, but but I would call it a chase movie. Yeah, I had the proper terminology for that earlier, but I just it, but like a gritty chase movie is what yeah. I picked this movie because this is becoming this is becoming a convoluted Netflix subgenre <laughs> that you're that you're bringing up. Like it's an action film. It's yeah, an action film. That's, that's true. It's a thriller. It's an action yeah. movie. I picked this movie because uh, I've heard a lot about it. You know, a lot of people have recommend a lot it's of my friends. Fr- yeah, it's a classic. It's actually the first movie yeah. to win a rated R uh, in the best picture when they had the uh, MPA rating system. Oh, that's cool. So that's pretty cool. Ready for this? Yeah. But mm-hmm. they changed. Um, oh, man. What was the movie? Oh, man. There was another movie that had an X rating, but then they eventually changed it that had won best picture. So technically, yeah. this was the first one to get it. And then there was a little asterisk on that one. Right, right. This yeah. movie takes place in the 70s. Uh, Midnight Cowboy. That's what it was. Sorry. Right. Go ahead. <laughs> in the 70s in New York City. Uh, now, uh, I mean, it was. In, I thought it was a good movie. I would have to say stream it. I'm definitely going to go with stream it. Um, as far as all the classic movies we've done, right. this is like the first one where it holds up. Yeah, this is deserve, top of the top. It deserves right. everything people say about it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to have to go with stream it also if you... And I also, this is the the second recommendation I would have for it, is not only stream it, but if you've seen it before, stream it again. Yeah. Right. Okay. Watch it again. And you know? it's Cause hour most of the time, 40 minutes. I hadn't seen this movie since, I had probably hadn't seen this movie in like 10 years. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's just, it's still so good. Like yeah. It just, it holds up. This it's gives you New York City like, at its finest, like back in the day. Yeah. 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 So it, it looks good. It's not right. like one of those older movies where you're like, this is way too grainy. No, it looks pretty good. Right. Right. Everything yeah. about it is uh, really cool. And well, if you I'm going to get into that a little bit because I like the cinematography in this, I think is really good. Yeah. Just it's, it's very interesting. A lot of the choices that they decided to make. All right. Cool. So let's take a break and let people watch it or don't. And then we'll come back. All right. Cool. Talk to you. Let me talk to you. You got a friend? You got a friend? You're going to tell us who your man is? When's the last time you picked a Pete, Willie? Who's your connection, Willie? What's his name? What? Answer him! No, no, man. No. Hey, no. Is it Joe the Barber? Huh? Joe the Barber, right? No. That's who it is, isn't it? I don't give a shit. What's Joe's last name? I don't know, man. Yeah, I know. He lives on 125th Street, man. About the barber shop. What's on the street, man? North or South? North or South? I don't know what you're talking about, man. I don't know. I'm asking you what side of the street he lives on. Hey, shithead. When's the last time you picked your feet? Huh? Yeah, what's he talking about? I've got a man in Poughkeepsie who wants to talk to you. You ever been in Poughkeepsie? Huh? Have you ever been in Poughkeepsie? Hey, man. Come on, give me a break. Hey, yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. Let me hear you say it. Come on. Have you ever been in Poughkeepsie? You've been in Poughkeepsie, haven't you? I want to hear it. Come on. Yes, yes. I've, I've You've been there, right? Yeah, yeah. You sat on the edge of the bed, didn't you? You took off your shoes, put your finger between your toes, and picked your feet, didn't you? Now say it! Yes! All right. You yes. put a shield on my partner. You know what that means? God damn it! All went along, I gotta listen to him gripe about his bowling scores. Now, I'm gonna bust your ass for those three bags, and I'm gonna nail you for picking your feet from Pepsi. Okay, and we're back. All right, so what did you guys like about it, or what didn't you like about it? I like the best. The best part about this movie for me is that this was like a meat and potatoes movie, man. There was no actually, yeah. I'll throw that in. I used to say there's like no movies out there with without a romantic subplot. Mm-hmm. You know, like Boondock Saints doesn't have a romantic subplot. Right. This movie, there's no romantic Boondock subplot. Saints has, Bo- Boondock Saints has a romantic subplot between the brothers. That's, you think there's some honest. homoerotic uh, incestual? I mean, I'm not saying homoerotic uh, incestual, but like they lay in bed together with their shirts off, having water dripped on each other. They just, a just they're in still. separate beds. Just because we really like this movie doesn't mean we got to bash other movies <laughs> on the way. To, <laughs> my, you know, my yes, my, yes, we do. <laughs> My point is, this movie decides it's going to be like an action, gritty detective movie, and it just runs with that 110%. There right, were parts yeah. of this where I was watching this movie, and I was like, oh, I can see how shows like The Wire eventually came to be. You know, it's unfortunate it's that this movie is really old. It's in the early 70s. 71. Yeah, and it's like, it shows you like the way that they wrote movies, the way that the people acted in these movies. Uh, 
it's like people haven't changed. Yeah. Movies have. Like they've gotten right. so much more tame. Like Gene Hackman drops the N word. He calls his partner a guinea. He like drops the N word really early on. Right. Too, it's in open. The movie. It's in and the opening it, credits. And it's the only one. It's the <laughs> only time he does it. Did anyone else when he did that? I was like, oh, he's gonna drop that a couple times in this movie. It's like, no, just this one time, just yeah. to let you know who Doyle Popeye is. Right. Yeah. Right. And it's. Well, I, I, I have to say my favorite thing about this entire movie all the way through, young Gene Hackman. Yeah. Killer. Oh. What a beast. Insane. Oh. I just love like I love I really love a lot of the early work that he that he did in film in general. Like if you haven't seen the movie The Conversation, have it's amazing. Seen it. If it's on Netflix then we'll do it for the show. If not, then I'm just gonna figure out a way for you to watch it because you should watch it. It's yeah. a great movie. Um it's what Francis Ford Coppola did before The Godfather. Um wow. And the director just, of this also directed The Exorcist. Yeah, no, no. That oh, was really? The, yeah. the next, that was the thing I was going to bring up. Was that, that makes the a lot of sense. The next movie that he did was The Exorcist. Yeah. And then kind of sadly, past that, right? it's like not a lot of stuff you'd know. His early 70s, this was his big year. This was yeah. his big like half decade. I well, guess. he hadn't done much before this. It's kind right. of amazing that he managed to make this, that this movie was so good, but it was like he made this, and then he made The Exorcist, and then he had a long string of stuff that just wasn't as great. Well, but he got to make this movie, I forget who the guy was, some Hollywood person, producer probably, had like two extra million dollars after a movie, and he said to, uh, what's the guy's name, Fried- Friedkin? Friedkin, yeah. The director Friedkin, he was like, if you can make a movie for under two million, if you can make this movie for under two million, you could do it. And they made it for 1.8 million, and when you do some research on the movie, it's like a lot of this stuff was shot off the cuff illegally without permits like right and, like, well, no, and it's that's, cool that, like the chase scenes and it looks the opening, amazing yeah the opening chase scene is when uh when Doyle and his partner played by Fernando Roy are going after this dude uh, that they get in a bar and they're chasing this guy down and just the shots of like parallel just like this guy running at top speed yeah. what a fantastic yeah. way to open the movie with Gene Hackman in the Santa Claus suit and the immediate bust. Like right. at first you're like, I know something's about to happen, but what's gonna happen? Right. Also, and Gene Hackman is a terrible Santa Claus. Yeah, oh, <laughs> he's the worst. He's a terrible Santa Claus. Yeah, and he knows it. <laughs> but the kids love it. The kids they don't see Santa Claus yeah, very often. Yeah, the kids were really happy about it. Yeah, they were thing. thrilled. That was in. Uh, that was over in Bed Stuy. That's what? was it. Ten minute love? walk from here. How do you know, know it was Bed Stuy? That, they mentioned that's it. What it's, that's what the internet told me. Oh, okay. The, well, they and also. They I must mean, have said They mention it yeah. when when they go after their when they go to like their uh, their boss the first time and they're like. We should be able to go after. We should be able to go after this guy, and they're like, "What are you going to bring me in a bellhop with three joints in his sock again?" Yeah. yeah. Uh, which, by the way, I love that line. It's mm-hmm. Fantastic. But, um, but when when they go to him, they're like, they're like, they they're bringing up like Bedsty and Bushwick and Ridgewood. Yeah. And I just had this moment where I was like, like we're in Bushwick right now. We're right next to Bed Bedsty and Ridgewood. And the only thought that I had was, man, it was shitty then. Also, like. Yeah. It, no, I mean this now, is like now when so I walk around the neighborhood, better, but I just pretend to be a young Gene Hackman. And I'm is just walking up to people <laughs> like, "Do you poke your feet in Poughkeepsie?" Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's a shitty cop. Let's not. Let's not. No, he's, he's a great cop. I don't he's a think shitty he's, person. He's yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. which makes him a That's bad. That's like cop. the tagline of the movie. Is like, <laughs> is Popeye Doyle is a bad person, but a good cop. No, he's not it a says, good... It says he's like a bad egg or something, a bad apple, but no, a good cop. No, he's a terrible cop. He's, I mean... All right, well, let's talk about why he's not a good cop. Okay, previously, uh, when he was investigating something else, a cop was killed. Yes, right. I love that. Early and on in the film, they allude to it, and when they say, like, you're going to wind up with another dead... Like, you're going to get another cop killed, and he freaks out, you know? Yeah. Well, he doesn't freak out the first time. He freaks out the second time someone brings yeah. it up. But I love that in a movie that kind of, like... Noir just refer to something that's happened, but leave the like. What's that? I'm just going. What's that? What was the story behind that exactly? You know? Yeah, they like never they let you do it. the work. So, uh, and then in the end, another cop gets killed. But we'll, let's not jump we'll ahead. That, yeah. Let's get to the plot. The plot essentially is that uh, in the beginning, it, it opens up well, with some guy in France getting killed, which mm-hmm. doesn't really get fleshed out that much, other than he had to go. That's all. Kind of like in The Exorcist, starts out in the desert. You see some weird sand blowing around and like a statue. Right. And you just forget about it an hour later. Yeah. And it's like a byline at some other point. So then uh, Gene Hackman and his partner, or Popeye and his partner, uh, essentially they're trying to figure out, uh, they figure out that there's this big drug bust. I mean, there's a drug deal that's supposed to happen between, and then it's eventually uh, revealed that it's between the French and the mob in New York City. 
And, uh, you know, a lot of his, a lot of people in his, uh, I guess, precinct doubt him. They're like, yeah, this is going to turn out to be nothing. You know, you're chasing absolutely nothing. You're wasting yeah, your time. A lot of his hunches in the past have proved to be duds. Right, yeah. right, right. So then eventually uh, it turns out that there is actually something going on at, that we know. I mean, the rest of people still continue to doubt him. Yeah. And it turns out that there was this, uh, in France, this guy used to uh, work at the docks, is now smuggling or working in the mob. He's like a TV star. But he's got all these mob friends because he used to work at the docks. That was my understanding of it. Oh, the the TV star, the French. The guy TV? with the car, yeah. Oh no, no, I thought that he was just a regular TV star. The guy, the old French dude, is the guy who now is in like the. French yeah, it's oh. the it's the rich French guy who like who talks about extending the pier at the beginning of the right, movie. Right. Okay. Yeah. That guy is the one who it's like essentially he's become really wealthy, so now he's starting to know all these other wealthy people. Mm-hmm. But he's still he knows all the guys at the docks. Yeah. So he's like he's connected in that kind of way. That was what I understood was was kind of like the relationship that was happening there. Yeah, so then basically they're following uh, the, uh, I guess the Italian dude, the Italian mobster, the young gunner who's trying to set up this deal. Boca. G- yeah, Boca. Boca. That's going to l- basically lead to a huge payout for I don't remember him. anybody's name in this movie. There were who, a lot of names. Yeah, there were There's a lot, a of, lot names. of names. So, and Boca and the, the Frenchman, uh, who they refer to as Frog, by the way, yeah. for a good portion. <laughs> this is why Gene Hackman, he's like, this, they're, wa- they're tailing these two French guys who come to America to set up this deal for heroin, which is really pure heroin, 89% pure, if I'm not mistaken. And um, they're, they're tailing these French guys, and these French guys are in a restaurant, and they're like, uh, every stereotype comes out. They have escargot, <laughs> they have French <laughs> onion soup, and then they have a French press. And then Gene Hackman and his partner, Popeye and his partner, is like, I think they're French. Really? Really? <laughs> is he ascertain that? Oh, you genius. Really cracking the case here, and I'm like, all right, that's fine, and um, and the best part is that the fr- the older French guy, he is pretty sure he's being tailed, and that yeah. scene between yeah. Popeye Doyle, Gene Hackman, and uh, the older French guy, Charnier, Charnier, yeah, he's the, he's like the brightest one. He wants right. to get in and get out. Yeah, yeah, he and knows something's up, and well, that he's scene, the, he's the guy, he's the guy who essentially went from being a longshoreman. Right, to right. being an incredibly wealthy guy, like running all of the docks in France, and so the reality that it comes down to is, is that he is like, he's the guy who has like to to, to pull something like that off in general. You got to know both sides. You've got to know both sides of the law. You've got to be able right. to. You've got to be able to hustle a lot, and you got to be able to get in and get out and not care what happens to other people. Yeah, mm-hmm. and so that's kind of like that's his character the whole time is that he's like, look, I'm trying to get in, I'm trying to get out, I'm trying to make a lot of money doing it, and I'm trying to never get caught. Mm, and never right. talk about it again, and then live a, a like a life in lavish luxury. The uh, the the deal is a half million for however much heroin, sixty one kilos, and, and on the street you're going to yield. Which, by the way, about, these days, great price. <laughs> probably still a great for well half a million, and then the return would be about thirty two million. They right. say so. This is yeah. a great investment. Yeah. Um, and of course, Boca wants to see this happen because now I feel like you're selling me a timeshare. This is right. a great investment. <laughs> it's a good investment. I mean, it's very little in with a big return. <laughs> if you guys don't use it, really, you're still making money. Y- you could get shot the in the back on the train tracks. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, is that you got to remember is, is that street heroin is uh, roughly like six percent heroin at this point. So okay. imagine eighty nine percent heroin to six percent heroin. I mean, even if you only use a portion of what you buy, right. I mean, you're still going to make money. That's why they say, like, even after you step on it. Eight times, it's still like you're going to get thirty two million of a return, you know. Yeah. So it's the the older Frenchman, and uh, he is a, an accomplice with him as well, who's like I basically his muscle, right? And uh, once uh, the what's the French guy's name again? Charnier. Charnier and Popeye, uh, Gene Hackman's character. Once they, you know, he's like once Charnier realizes he's being tailed. He has his sniper, his muscle, take care of. And this scene's incredible. The sniper just opens yeah. up shot. Open up, well, opens up just shops. Before, before we get that, I got to say, my favorite scene in this movie has mm-hmm. to be the cat and mouse game between Charnier and Popeye right. on the train. Yes. Oh, my and God. And that's when Charnier yes. realizes that, like, oh, this, oh, it's not like, I'm not paranoid. I am being tailed. Right. Yeah. And, and dude... If you explained to me, like if I read this scene in the script, I'd say that's ridiculous. How You can't make this work without it looking crazy. Mm. No. Gene Hackman and yeah. that actor, I'm not sure, they make it work perfectly. These guys are hopping on and off the train and just acting super casual. You know right? what it is? You know what? It, it like That's how you can tell that the director was really good and you can tell that like Gene Hackman and um, I cannot remember the guy's name. Charnier. Charnier, Charnier but uh, the actor, yeah. uh, that they're very good is that that scene on and off of a train and I'm following you, uh, that is a like that's a film school scene. 
Oh yeah. Like there's no there's no talking. Mm-hmm. Oh, you mean like, like they show that in film school? Like no, no. But I mean like, like they show that in film school, but like that's the type of thing that you're expected to make mm-hmm. when you're like a first year film student, where it's like tell a story with no dialogue, right? Right. Where you understand the relationship between the two of them, and you understand what's going on, and there's tension, and there's all these things. And the thing is, is that it's those type of scenes are terrible. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's one of those moments where it's like, in most situations, people talk to each other. They do different things. And, yeah. But that scene was pulled off so well. They're at the same juice bar for like 20, 30 Which, seconds. Which, by the way, that is the weirdest juice bar thing. It's yeah. back in the to 70s, have, dude. I know, but like back in the 70s, is it, can you imagine if you were just like, you're like underground at an mm. L stop, and then you're like, oh, I'm just going to get a grape drink. Yeah. I love that grape drink, yellow right. drink. <laughs> I'm, you know, what, I wouldn't be surprised if we see those pop up in the next five years. Yeah. So they go I back and either, forth, but it's gonna be like a Jamba Juice, right? Right. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. But and when uh, so that's when Shonio knows, and that's right. when he calls the guy Nic- the muscle. Nikolai. Nikolai. Yeah. yeah. He gets his muscle, Nikolai, and he mm-hmm. says, "Nikolai's like, let me take him out." Shonio's kind of like. I just want to get it in and out. Charnier, Nikolai's prop- itching. He's itching. Nikolai wants this to happen yeah, so Nikolai bad. He hasn't killed burn. somebody since the beginning of the movie, and he's furious. <laughs> and this is this he is really wants to kill somebody. <laughs> right. If I had to pick my second favorite scene, and it's a long dude, that train scene where they're playing cat and mess, that's a long one. And the sniper scene going into the car chase, that's a long, right. long like part you of the what, movie. You know what mm. my favorite? Um, well, my favorite set of, of things, like just my favorite like trope of the 70s that I love that's in this movie, the amount of just like frilly baby carriages mm-hmm. that yeah. are just around. Yeah. Because yep. like the lady who gets shot, they didn't just have her get shot. They got like by, by, by the sniper. It, she got shot and had a baby carriage. That's, that where, the scene, that's where it opens it up. away into the middle of nowhere. Right. That's where it opens up. The whole cat and mouse scene is when with a, a mother getting killed. I had no idea what was going on. When I, I was like, yeah. I thought the mother was getting shot totally independently of what was going on with Popeye and his crew. They're just pointing yeah. out how I was like, up yeah. the neighborhood I just is. reminded myself, I was like, oh yeah, that's the projects in bed This is what happens. So like, <laughs> this, is, yeah, <laughs> so this is a mother getting shot, you know. <laughs> what an what awful happened. neighborhood. 1971. <laughs> and in Popeye's Bro- not even caring much about it. He's like, eh, you Popeye's know. Popeye's like, I just clogged out. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm off. I'm not <laughs> I clogged out. Way. I'm going to go have a bagel underneath this tree. I'm going right. to go capture a girl on a bike? Yeah. That was an interesting throw into the yeah. movie. If there is a romantic subplot, it's a... Uh, well, it's yeah, just that, that was one night really stand. random. It was random. Well, they just wanted to show that I don't know that show this, the type of dude Popeye this is, is. What man. he is. This is what yeah. he gets himself yeah. into. So the chase scene, uh, the uh, the sniper gets on the train, mm-hmm. and um, Popeye's unable to get to him on the train. So what does he do? He goes down. Goes going to go to the next station. Gets a car, which is hysterical. That cars are avoiding him. Cars are avoiding him. And I gotta say, the only time I've ever seen in a movie where someone like commandeers a vehicle, and you hear the guy in the car when he gets out say, "When am I gonna get it back?" Yeah, and Gene Hackman's Never. halfway down the road, right? right. Yeah. You know? <laughs> And Never. I'm, and after what Gene Hackman does to that car, you're never gonna see your car yeah, again. Right. It's a pile. <laughs> so it's a pile of scrap metal so by the time ridiculous. he is done. That car got more beat up than they even planned to do in filming. Like no. there was like an extra crash or two that they decided to keep in. Yeah. They were like, well, oh, yeah. it, it happened and it looks okay. This was off book, by the way. Yeah. I, I feel that it was off book. So the chase scene once is, again. Once again, he narrowly avoids somebody with a baby carriage. Yep. Again, yes. So that's face. where. That's where. By the way, things like this movie. That's the reason why things like the Simpsons and stuff like that have all of those moments where it's like it's a car chase. Oh my god, there's somebody with a baby carriage. Right, like, right. It's movies like this that are the reason why those things exist. Such which is influence. why I loved it so much. The baby carriage and speed, but oh my god, it's just aluminum cans. Thank <laughs> yeah. God. And they're on the it's the N train. He's chasing under the bridge on yeah. the N train. Stillwell Avenue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Starting in Bensonhurst. Right. All right, there we go. Good. This good. is all. This is all, guys. This Thank happened you. all around us. And Thank then, you, Google Maps. Thank and you. then he. Uh, they get to the next stop, but then the, uh, the 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 muscle pretty much goes to the front of the train after killing a cop. Yeah, it kills a cop. Kills a cop, goes to the front of the train, tells him to keep going, and then you know uh, the other train conductor comes to the train and goes, hey, what's going on? You're not going to get away with this. That guy gets shot. The train conductor passes out, probably has a heart attack, because he's skipping stops. He knows he's screwed. Yeah, he's yeah. getting fired. He, he's getting fired. He knows that. And then finally... I don't um, feel like you would get fired for having a gun held to your head and then... Not trying to. Die. You don't Never know mind. the MTA, Steve. I digress. It's, <laughs> it's a black guy in the, the early MTA. 70s. You think they're not itching to fire him to begin <laughs> yeah. with? So then, the finally, they get the train. The train is uh, the train stops because it actually it hits the emergency it's brake the end of the line, yeah. right? And then hits another train. 
and the uh, the sniper, the muscle, hits his head. He's disoriented, loses his gun, comes out. Finally, Gene Hackman's able to catch up to him. Really not much about questions here. <laughs> Just kills the guy. Well, this is a great little scene because Gene Hackman, first of all, was anyone else even confused why Gene Hackman was like starting to fall down? He was. He, I was like, I guess he's. I mean, he did crash was, his car nine times. Yeah. He, yeah what would I you know, expect? Yeah. I didn't think. I don't know. It's I was, odd. I'm not gonna lie. I was very confused as to why Gene. Ha- I was like, did he get shot at some point when I wasn't paying yeah. attention? Were, were you really confused? I mean, I once I, I scraped mean, I a car the other week and I felt tired. Felt like taking a nap. <laughs> this guy hit his car on ninety different. Th- no, I'm sorry. Hit another dude's car on ninety different things. You're telling me he's not gonna be a little disoriented? You think he was wearing a seatbelt? No. I, I like the idea that it was like right at that point, like he like held the gun up to the guy. And then in his head, he just went, oh, man, that was somebody else's car. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm about to, to be in that. a lot of trouble with my boss. Right. And he kills the dude. Well, N- Nikolai looks at him. Nikolai yeah. turns around. Hackman says, stop, and immediately shoots him in the back. Yep. Which is way against protocol. Continues to yeah. prove my point that he's a bad cop. Yeah. It's... <laughs> Look, he's, he's a listen, terrible cop with it's great personal. intentions. It's personal at that point, though. You Is it personal? Yeah, How you know is it what? personal? How is it personal? Because yeah. he was being sniped at from a rooftop That's minutes true, earlier. but it's not like his mom was killed or listen, his aunt. Hackman is the cop who bends the rules and gets the job. I'm just going to seen- point this out. Have you ever seen a police chase that ends where they, where they get their hands on the guy? Oh, uh, yeah. Because... It'll be like a couple cops beating the hell out of him. Right. And then like other cops will show up where you're like, oh, that cop's going to pull him off because he's beating the hell out of him. And then they'll like pull the guy off so that they can beat the hell yeah. out of him because right. they're like, you made us run after you. Yeah. I feel like I feel Hack- like that's what that's what Hackman was channeling at that point. These movies come out and then like at the police academy, they're like, please don't do any of these things. <laughs> yeah. Please do not go rogue like this. Do you see all the damage that's being... That's a nice car, dude. And while they were filming this scene, the dude who they... So these two... And I just want to point something out real quick. You notice how we're glossing over the other... The uh, sidekick, Hackman's partner? Yeah. Because let's yeah. be honest, he's a great actor. I forget his name. Roy Schneider. Roy, Sh- Roy Scheider. Schneider. But uh, I think there's no it's one. Roy I think it's just Scheider. I could be wrong. I don't know. Well, it doesn't matter. But look, all I know is this: he was great in Jaws. He, yeah, he was great in Jaws. He's good in this movie, but honestly, this movie is all about Hackman. This movie right. is all about oh, Popeye. Yeah. It's yeah. just and uh, you don't want to see the level-headed guy. Yeah, I mean, even though he's not that level-headed as as uh, I mean, he's he seems normal compared to Popeye Doyle, but. When the way that he's just going, the way that uh, Gene Hackman is going off the rails, you're more excited to watch that than to, yeah. s- than to see what his partner yeah. does. Plus, his partner earlier on in the movie, when they're like answering to the captain or whatever, what is what is uh, what is Cloudy? Cloudy is Popeye's partner. Cloudy says, "I back my partner," and I was like, "Yes, yes, yeah. you do, man." Right. Like he knows, he knows Popeye's maybe not the most honest cop, maybe in the sure, night, but he gets the job done. Yeah, and they had the dude. All right, so these two cops were based off a real life uh, duo in this act. This is kind of based off a true story but they fictionalized it completely. But the cop who was who Popeye was based off was there on set. Everyone there said like we sh- he shouldn't get shot in the back. Like that's crazy. And the cop was like Nah, I'll allow it. Like, yeah, let him. Yeah. <laughs> he, didn't, uh, he didn't say I would have shot the guy in the back, but yeah. he was like, yeah, no, leave it in. And apparently when they tested the movie, that part got a standing ovation. Jesus. So they went and actually put that scene. You see the poster That's for the, one of the posters right. for the movie? Right, it's the guy it's falling. Him. It's Nikolai getting shot in the Which, back. By That's the way, it looks amazing. frighteningly like John Malkovich. <laughs> the whole time I kept thinking, is that John Malkovich? Is that a young John I Malkovich? he kind of looked like a shrewd Willem Dafoe. Uh, <laughs> a shrewd Willem Dafoe. A shrewder Willem yeah. Dafoe. <laughs> I really, th- <laughs> you know, we'll have to we'll have to show the picture to uh, um, an unbiased okay, so, party. So after he gets, uh, after he shoots the guy, which they never bring up, you know, nope. you never see the captain reaming him out. No, nope. it just happens. It comes to well, my greater they're, point they're at, not, the, at the I end mean, of the movie. I will point this out: is is that like you, w- like no cop would get yelled at these these days back then ever for that. It's a the guy the guy shot. Uh, an innocent woman yeah, killed a cop. True. Like shot an innocent woman. That's a good shot point. at a bunch of people. Right, and then proceeded to not only run, but shoot two people on a moving train while holding one of them hostage. Right, yeah. and then two cops and one MTA and then worker. Ran, oh, he didn't. He didn't and shoot then, the MTA worker. And then ran away. Yeah, he did. He shot another MTA worker. That was, that was a M- cop. That was like a, like a transit cop. Yeah, but that's well, there was that's a transit seven cop. year felony right there. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and then, but like, you know, the way that he shot him, 
you know, which is why they tested it, I'm sure. And mm-hmm. they like and, you know, and they asked the guy was it is like the way that he shot him is sketchy as hell. But the fact that he shot him is would be perfectly fine by any. And yeah, if that happened in real life, it'd be like, OK, good. Like, yeah, shot the guy in the back. Good. So then yeah. uh, then they follow less paperwork for all of us yeah. to book him and to do fingerprints and to have to house him somewhere. Well, the only thing that you would think was that, like, it'd be great to get him alive to question about Charnier. Yeah. But yeah. So what they do, they we don't got up, time for that. <laughs> they wind up staying. Taking the black Cadillac, the right. Lincoln, yes, the Lincoln, mm-hmm. and uh, let me point this out. Obviously, I hope you guys have watched the movie at this point. Now, this car is stashed with a uh, lot of drugs, a lot of yeah, drugs. sixty-one keys, sixty-one keys, right? And they park it in a very nice car underneath the Brooklyn Bridge, sketchy area. in nineteen seventy-one uh-huh. New York City, like. That's not a great idea. This whole thing is very well thought out, and then they leave all their drugs, in, and that's what happens. These dudes roll up in a car, and while the cops are staking it out, this this crew begins to like get out to take the tires off they later yeah. reveal. Mm-hmm. The cops spur it out because they think it's you know the, something's going down with the drug deal. Yeah. And then they impound the car. Now, my question is this, because we all love this movie, clearly. Mm. Let's say some things we found wrong with it. How did they just impound the car? Why didn't they just impound the car to begin with? Because they wanted to catch him in the act. They wanted to catch him in the act, and the thing is, is that if you, they thought that those were the people that were coming to pick up the car. Yeah. If if it had been, they would have just arrested them. Right. But because they jumped out, now they're covered. They were like made. Right? Yeah. Like so they made had to take the. Anybody watching could have known like there's cops watching this car. I'm not going to go after it. So they yeah. just took the car and impounded it. Okay. And then because they were able to, they were able to flip the story on it where they're like, oh yeah, it got stolen. Yeah, right, right, right. But they knew, I mean, from the beginning, uh, the mob sort of knew that uh, Boko was being tracked. I mean, yeah. you know, he's like one of the yeah. older older guys in the mob. Is like, listen, you got cops all over you, like fleas. Like, you know, right. let's let this cool down a bit. There's a lot of like, you know, it's a lot of like, hey, listen, we should probably scale back. We should. Pr-. And the whole time I'm thinking, all right, they're going to do it. They're going to scale back. Something, something's going to happen. But the movie's not that long. So... It's almost like 20 minutes left, and I'm thinking, what's happening here? They still have the car in the impound lot, and they're not finding the drugs. They're stripping it. They're stripping it completely until at the last moment, the guy's like, hey, what was the weight of the car? And like, oh, but the actual weight should be this. And then they finally find the drugs. And then they had a replacement car, which I guess is not really discussed. No, it's... See, I thought the same thing. I was like, how did they... Because when they strip the car, it looks like they tear the thing to bits. They did. Like and not just in a me- in a mechanical sense. No, like they they're d- ripping shit yeah. out. Right, right. And then I turned to I was while Steven was sitting down. I said, I was like, did they have a replacement car? Or what the hell was that? And he's like, no, they put it back together. No, they didn't. They definitely know, had a. Acor- re- did they? According it, to the plots I've read, yeah, they put it back together. That doesn't but make any sense because to me, I don't it think just, it does either. Because they do say, oh, we get forty five hundred cars here um, almost a day, or no, four to five hundred cars here a day. Yeah. So you're telling me by that rationale, why would they not? Why would they put that bit of information in if they didn't have access to similar looking cars, if not the exact same car? See, I thought that that was just them, because because obviously the French guys are like, "Where is my car? Why are you right. not giving me my car back?" And I took that. As, I I personally took that as being them stalling because they were putting it back together. Yeah. No, that has to be right. Especially because, consider this, this guy had his personal car come in from France. That steering wheel is on the left side. Even with four or 500 cars a day, you're not going to get that make, model, year, and the steering wheel on the wrong side. That's, huh, that's true. That's, yeah, they, okay. All right, so they put it back together. Right. It's kind of unbelievable the way right, they right. do it because they really tear that thing Nevertheless. Bits. But so they put it back together, and then what happens? And then after that, basic, then the drug deal goes down. Uh, the, you know, they send the French guy on the way with his car. Uh, they they go to Randall's Island. Yeah, to Ran- I saw Wu Tang yeah. there. And Rage I was going to say, machine. have either of you been to Ward's Island? Yeah, I have. Like the moment that they start running away from the cops, mm-hmm. that because I first of all love that it's happening on Ward's Island because there's nothing on Ward's Island. Right. Like it's like there's like it's a such couple a cliche place diamond. to have a drug deal go down. Well, no, no, but it's the perfect place to have a drug deal go down in 1971. But they probably. set it up yeah. because the uh, because Boca's brother. Works there anyway. Working, he's uh, he's learning the trade of, right. the tra- of uh, being a trash man. Right. Yeah, so good yeah, point. They set that up early on, so yeah. you're just kind of like you let it go. Mm. So then they get there and they do the they do the exchange where they now put money into the car and put the drugs somewhere in some like you know in part of the factory or some of an abandoned warehouse. Yeah. And now this is where to me it gets ridiculous. This is where the movie just gets a little little too much. Where. <laughs> Now, uh, the actor and the and Charnier are driving over the bridge, and there's Doyle with the police force, waves hello to them. He's got his moment, 
and uh, Charnier and the the actor decide to you know go the other way, and I'm yeah. going like. Y- you didn't the first the first thing that I said to Dennis was that I was like, "Have fun, man," because there's one way off Ward's Island. Like, there's there's one road. But like, you're telling me you couldn't like have some guys dressed up as maintenance workers putting some strips down to stop these dudes. You only left one way in. You're gonna now leave a whole island to play manhunt on. I'm like, this is this That's is a good like, point. Like, I was expecting them to like spin the car around and then come over the backside of the bridge and, and there to be cops. another set of cops there. Yeah, you don't want to just... there wasn't. There wasn't. So now it's a manhunt on the island and it becomes this ridiculous gunfight, which was really not needed if you no, think about yeah. it. No, no. What are you talking about? I, first of all, first of all, how from boring... From a police a... perspective. All right. Right. Well, you know what? Yeah. Guess who was heading this case? <laughs> right. Popeye, baby. Yeah. That's not how he does things. Exactly. Okay. Another That's point. <laughs> He's he, a bad cop. He wants his moment. He wants to give his partner a shotgun so he could blast Boca in the chest. R- right. Yes. He wants, this is this has to go down this way. This has a, to go yeah. down in a firefight. It goes in a, You're right. It does, but it's just so unfortunate because now it goes into a it gets into a, a gunfight where uh the mobsters who were on the island are now in the warehouse. They chase down uh Charnier and uh the actor and uh, now it, it's this massive gunfight, and now Gene ha- Popeye is looking for Charnier. He's like in an abandoned building in right. the dark. Yeah. He almost kills his partner, and then you're like, oh my god, that was a close one. But then he ends up killing a cop. He ends up killing... Yeah, but he ends up killing that dickhead cop that doesn't from earlier. does make it better that he who, kills a dickhead he cop. Kept, he kept bringing up, you killed that cop before, and Gene Hackman's like, I'm going to kill you the first chance I get. But now it's just like, all right, between the car scene, the car chase scene, between all the ridiculous stuff that he gets into, and then killing a cop at the end, I'm thinking... It's just an insurmountable amount of paperwork. This guy's got to deal yeah. like an obscene amount of paperwork. Like that's just well, like, yeah, that's why they transferred him. Right, yeah, because to what? Bo- uh, to what bookings? Where he just sits there and does paperwork <laughs> all day long? What if on the le- like when they were doing the blurbs at the end of the movie, it just said it was revealed that Popeye was never a cop at all? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just a vigilante with a gun, right? Going around shooting people. Just bought a badge in a ninety-nine cent store. <laughs> He'd been. He was a cop. He was fired six years previous to this case. And Charnier, nobody ever told his boss. Right, just showed up every day. <laughs> Charnier like ends up fired. He brings donuts. We just yeah. Charnier escapes at the end. Yeah, which is crazy. You know, kind they of unbelievable. The, the epilogue. But the he epilogue. is the smart one. He might have set up some sort of getaway. Who knows? Right. Boca gets killed. He gets shot. Shot in the chest. A lot of the people actually end up giving up because they shoot in the smoke gun, and uh, you know they come out and they're like, "This is just not worth it." You know what I love about that about that gunfight scene? Right. And they did this in the seventies way more than they do now. Mm-hmm. Nobody could shoot. Yeah. Yes. Nobody was a good shot. Right. The cops weren't a good shot. Mm. They had hilarious like like this the hilarious the hilarity to me of like six dudes around one window towards the police and they've all got snub nose revolvers. Yeah. Just like, eh, what uh this is how I'll shoot. I'll just shoot it yeah, it's, it's, I shoot like this. Like it's not like these guys are like trained so much and really fire. good with guns or anything like that. They're you know even the smoke bomb didn't miss. <laughs> like it yeah. was just on the side <laughs> of the building. And I think the guys were like, Oh, it's getting too smoky in here and uh it's an epilogue at the end you don't really you know it's not like uh they they give you a few details and information both uh popeye and his partner get transferred uh, everyone pretty much gets a slap on the wrist pretty yeah. much slap on the wrist and the main guy charnier gets away and get, yeah and he gets away and, and let me tell you what a great ending i'm yeah. so happy it ended that yeah. way right it's th- a set it's kind of a, it's not really a sad ending but it's like it's a popeye ending you know what i mean yeah. it's right. like this dude's downtrodden he was trying to... That's a this perfectly whole movie, good point, Dennis. This, it is a Popeye ending. It is a Popeye ending, because yeah. this whole movie, it's yeah. like, it, you kind of know that Popeye has is responsible for the death of a cop, and he's this is his big case. Not that he needs to make a comeback. He's he's a decent enough cop, but like right. this is a big one. Well, this no, is a big score for him and his partner. It's that he needs a win. He needs a win bad. Like, he's gotten these little itty-bitty things, mm-hmm. but he wants like like to redeem himself for fish. this huge thing. Yeah, he wants, he wants to fish. get the big fish, and he wants to get the big... The big catch. Yeah, and it's... uh, it's. Did the cartoon come out before 
or after? I'm sorry, cartoon? Yeah, Popeye, uh, Popeye the Sailor Man. Oh, Popeye's been up since like the 20s, man. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. Popeye was out before. Yeah, so... <laughs> um, I thought, like, and then they started totally... a cartoon based on... <laughs> yeah. But they changed him completely. He's and a sailor now. Is it really, though? Is it really the ridiculousness of Popeye the cartoon guy? Popeye, Popeye, the, car- Popeye the cartoon is the second career of, <laughs> Popeye, Doyle. of Popeye Doyle. Popeye the cartoon eats spinach. Popeye Doyle eats beer and bullets. Right. <laughs> and just and chases women on Can bikes I? and then sleeps with them. Okay, I wanted to point this out earlier, but it did it because uh, I I was talking earlier about cinematography in the movie. Mm-hmm. I I love the cinematography that's in this movie, and one of the things that I love about it is not even like like all the chase scenes and stuff like that. I think are great, um, but honestly, my favorite my favorite scene to watch to just look at was the first time that he goes into the bar. And he knocks. He like is like everybody up against the wall, and then right, starts yeah. just pulling drugs out of the bottom of the bar. Which, by the way, I had a moment where I was watching that where I was like, I gotta start checking the Same underside. Same here. Of, yeah, I gotta start I checking the underside of bars when I go into dive bars just to see whether there's like a bunch of heroin and coke yeah. and weed. You get there. stuck with a heroin needle. Um, we'll never see you again. Absolutely. <laughs> but uh, but when when he pulls the uh, the guy who owns the place, uh, or I don't know what, I felt like that was what it was, was that he owned the place. No, he was a, he was um, a rat, an informant. Well, no, but he was an informant, but I felt like he was like running, he was like, he like owned that bar. I don't know what whether that's think he was. I think he was an know. undercover cop, wasn't he? Um, I- Irrelevant, really. No, I think, yeah, he was just, I think he was just an informant. Right. But when he pulled him into the bathroom, it just made me so happy because it wasn't that like, that noir thing that they do where it's like where it's like oh it's pools of light you know like in these yeah. long shots like the like you had in like the 20s or 30s but what you had was was this reality of like they're underneath a light and their faces are just completely dark mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. they don't like i just loved the fact that it was like any movie you'd have now if you made this movie today they would be like we have to see their faces yeah like we got to get a bounce card in here we've got to do some we've got to at least see like you know see the expressions and stuff like that on their faces and in this case the filmmaker and the cinematographer were like, no. Yeah. This is just what this bathroom would look like. like it's a dive bar bathroom. It right. would 100% look like this. You can't see people in that bathroom. Uh-huh. It's part yeah. of the way that they fucking, they were happy to have that bathroom. Yeah. Like Maybe that. back then it wasn't, that was just the norm of how they shot things. And like now. No, it wasn't. It like w- the, it wasn't completely the norm of how they shot things. There were still, I mean, there, there were movies that were doing more things like that yeah. at that time period. But it was definitely a choice that they made to to shoot the thing like that and I just loved it so much because it just had this moment where it was like thank you for not making this a movie mm-hmm. like in the sense yeah. that's like it's like oh well, they it said they kind of well shot lit. it like a we've documentary gotta be able to, we've got to be able to see everything we've got to be able to if they walk out of the pool of light you know if they walk out of the light and into into dark we need to relight that section to make sure that it looks and they were like nope do you think it was choices or well, we don't have the money for light? That's I think really it was both. choices. Yeah, I think it, well, I think that it was it was what are our choices with the amount of money we have? Mm. And they went, well, we could shoot it like this because we don't have enough money for a lot of lights. And they were like, cool, let's shoot it like that. I bet it'll look great. And what you end up with is 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 the movie that you got. That to me is like it's it's kind of necessity is the mother of invention moment. Right. With mm. a movie like this where it's like we don't have a lot of money, how should we shoot this? And it's like. And I almost have that moment where I'm like, where I'm like, you know, what they decided to do was was that with a lot of the different scenes was like, let's just make it a chase scene. Mm-hmm. Like we don't have the money. I almost looked at it. and I was like, I wonder whether half the movie they were like, we don't have the money for a sound guy. <laughs> like yeah. we don't have the money for a sound guy. Make it a chase scene. I don't know much about art, but I like this movie and the yeah. way it looks. Yeah, this movie's so. good. That's we got so, so caught up in talking about the plot, but yeah, this movie looks fantastic. It's it still holds up. Saying that it. Uh, that it was the directed by the same guy as The Exorcist makes a lot of sense to me now because right. yeah. in the, like in The Exorcist, there's a lot of like big wide shots and then you zoom in super close and it's like, oh, there's that guy doing that thing in the distance, like that minute, like he's just sitting at a cafe. I didn't even know that was that guy. Or mm-hmm. the opposite where it's like yeah. on this guy's face and then it pulls back and it's this huge, big, broad scene, you know? Right. But uh, can so I, can I confess something to you guys? I've never watched The Exorcist. Oh, please, I hope it's on Netflix. It, I'll watch that movie. It terrifies me. I'm not good with scary movies, and, it, and the movie itself terrifies me. It's like a I've fantastically... Seen scenes, and it's fantastically made yeah. to terrify you, and it terrifies me, so I've never watched We're it. We're going to change this to two guys, a girl, and a book club. <laughs> yep. <laughs> really? Uh, I'm okay with that. <laughs> well, uh, I'm I def- would, yeah, I would uh, say stream it, right? Stream it, absolutely. This is, uh, wait, was this, this is like our only, our second uh, unanimous decision, right? I think it might be. Right. What yeah, we had Deep Water. Deep Water was unanimous. Deep Water, also. the first okay. episode, yeah. A movie I picked, unanimous decision. Can we say that I make good choices? 
Jury's well, not no, out yet. Blood Sport. Blood Sport, we also unanimously. Yeah, so. I'm oh, yeah, telling yeah. you, your boy right here making but that the was good me, picks. But that was also me begrudgingly. Because <laughs> it's a good movie. <laughs> Pony Pool should have been all three. But okay, what's, ah, our, what's our pick for next week? Our, our pick for next week is going to be a documentary that is called Video Games the Movie. Okay. Okay. Listen. I've been wanting to watch it. I I need to see. Well, I don't know Steven's whether it's good last or pick. Yep. <laughs> Guys. You loved my last. pick. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. You're right. Okay. All right. So there we go. Website. Find us. Oh on yeah. The Netflixbookclub.com. It's Netflixbookclub.com. No spe- uh, funny spelling or anything like that. Just go at it. You can find us all our information there. And uh, you know, SoundCloud. You can find us at right. You can find us on SoundCloud. If we if we get everything together, you'll find us on iTunes, Twitter, right, all Facebook, those other places. everything. You know, find, all right, us, find us on the places. There we go. That wraps it up. Have a good one, everybody.